your hands together, bless the name of God. Lord of God, just pray, Lord, your servant, your son. Lord is going to bring a now word, Father, so that we can be enhanced to another level. Lord, I pray that you bless him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you know his heart's desire. You know his will for his life, Lord. It's all wrapped up in you, Father. But Lord, your grace is sufficient for him. Strengthen him, Lord. Guide him, Lord. Cover him, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. What a wonderful service today. Amen. Amen. Wonderful worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God. We bless God. Amen. 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 I just want to just share some thoughts with us. Amen. Amen. And then. Um, because we're kind of running out of time, I'll try to make it as brief as I can. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But this morning, you know, last time when I um, came to preach the word, amen, amen, I spoke regarding the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. You know, our work with God, we can't do it on our own. Amen. It's impossible without God amen. to live. Um, a successful Christian walk with God. Amen. Amen. So we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ said something about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, even our salvation, even coming to Jesus Christ, we couldn't come to God in our strength. Jesus Christ says, I'll send your comforter and he will convict the world of sin. Yes. So, the day we had the gospel of Christ, the Spirit of God drew us close to God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Then we came to Christ. And we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And believe you me not, or believe you me. Now that you have come to Christ, the Holy Spirit brought you in. He will have to complete the work. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So that's why it's important in our work with God that we'll understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, in the church today, the Holy Spirit has been played down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And if you don't give the Holy Spirit the opportunity to minister, mm -hmm. He's such a gentleman, he's such a gentleman mm -hmm. that he won't push himself on anybody, amen? Yeah. But when we begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. when we begin to talk about the gift of the Spirit, yes. then we begin to see the manifestation of it, amen? Yeah. Like what the Bible says, it says faith comes by hearing yeah. and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. There are certain things that if we don't hear, the faith to actually walk in it won't come. Amen. So that a lot of people see the Holy Spirit as a force or as an air somewhere. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a person. Yes. Amen. Amen. John chapter 4, verses 24 says, God is a spirit. And they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God Himself. He was involved in creation. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 2. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible says, By the word of God, the world was created. And by the host of it, and the host of them, and, and by his breath, the host of it was created. Yes. In the Old Testament, the word breath is also used as the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit has always been in the Old Testament. We read the story about the dry bone yes. in Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? But because of English language, it kind of it clouds who the Holy Spirit is in that story. Amen? Amen. Whenever the, in the Old Testament they use breath, they talk about the Holy Spirit. Yes. Job said something, the spirit of the Lord has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. So the Holy Spirit is who gives us life. When God breathed in man, the Holy Spirit was involved. Amen. 
Hallelujah. So we need the Holy Spirit in our walk with God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Let's open our Bibles quickly to John chapter 16. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. John chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 7. Are we all there? Amen. Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me not and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Verses 12 says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So Jesus was telling the disciples, he says, look, I have a lot of things to tell you guys, but you can't bear them now. So Jesus Christ even knows that we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come. Amen. He's also called the spirit of truth. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says he will guide you. He's a he, he's a person. Amen. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak. By himself, the word says, means by himself, not on his own. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Amen. And he will show you things to come. Amen. He will glorify me, for you shall receive of mine, and shall show, and for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Amen. Therefore, said I that. He shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Amen? Amen? You know, if we want to walk in the fullness of what God has called us into, we need the Holy Spirit. He guides us. He helps us to walk in the promises of God. All the promises of God in the scriptures. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no way we can walk in it. <laughs> Amen? And in our work, on our daily, daily work, we need the Holy Spirit. There was a time in the Bible, um, during, in the book of Acts, chapter 11, when Paul was on his way, uh, no, in chapter 16, he was on his way, and the Bible says, the Holy Spirit bade me not to go. There are times in our work with God, we struggle to actually know what to do next. Or where to go next. Or how to go about things. And we kind of confuse. And don't know what to do. Have we all been in that situation before? A lot of times. Amen. And it looks as if there's nobody. You know all the advices you got from people. Nothing seems to work. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. So, if Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will guide us into the world truth, it means that we have to develop a very close relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, with a lot of people, when you begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, they think about it's something spooky, they don't really want to get involved in it. But, Jesus said something. The reason why... First of all, let me just explain this before I talk about what Jesus said. Before Jesus Christ went, he was the comfort, he, he helped the disciples. He was their comforter. He helped them during prayers. He gave them instruction on how to go about things. Amen? Amen. But now that he's gone, he said, I will send you another comforter. Amen? Amen. You see, another comforter, it means the word alos, paracletus. Amen? And I will explain what that really means. 
There are times in the Bible that you use the word another, but there are two different words for another. It is. In English, you don't know the difference, but in Greek, there is a lot of difference. There is one called alos, and there is one called heteros. Can I have two people that I can use as an example, amen? Just two people, anybody, amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I say another comforter, to a lot of people, it means that this is Brother Tony, I mean Dick and Tony, amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And this is Brother Reg, amen? So when we look at both of them, there it's after Brother Tony is gone, then I have another person who is different from Brother Tony. So that's heteros. Then when I say alos, it means that I have Dick and Tony and I have somebody exactly like Dick and Tony. No difference. The same person. So when Jesus Christ said, I will send you another comforter, it means the one of the same kind as me. That's exactly what it means. Amen? So thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Amen? So the Holy Spirit is as Christ is with you now. Amen? Amen? He exposes or shows that which God has given to us. He says, He will show you what belongs to me. He will show it unto you. And you will glorify Christ. So the Holy Spirit is the one that glorifies Christ in our lives. You know, whenever we go, wherever we go or anywhere we go, they ought to see Christ in us. Amen? Amen? The one that does that work is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. He's the Spirit of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to show us some of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's open quickly to Exodus chapter 31. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Amen. Then the Lord spoke, spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, and the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. In what? Wisdom, in what? In knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. To design artistic work, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewel for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I indeed, I have appointed with him Aholia, the son of Aishemak and the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans that they may make all that I have commanded you. Amen? Amen? So, you see, this is the Holy Spirit helping them fulfill God's plan for the tabernacle. Amen? Amen. So, he is the spirit of wisdom. He's the spirit of knowledge, yes. he's the spirit of understanding, yes. and he's the spirit of God in all manner yes. of workmanship. Yes. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is not just only to just guide you into all truth, he's there to even help you with your walk. Yes. <laughs> you know, a lot of young ones in school, they say, look, I hate maths. The, 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 the world tells us that um, um, in UK, the statistics for maths in schools is really, really bad. Amen? Amen. But if you've got the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Amen, yes. it will guide you into all truth. Yes. Even at work, yes. even in how to in how to live at peace in your family, yes. in how to have a good health, yes. the Holy Spirit yes. is involved in it. Yes. And even it helps you in 
prosperity. Amen. And you invested in the right businesses. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is there to help you in righteousness. Yes. He's there. He, he, he gave that to us because the Bible says we are born of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But He's just not going to just leave us comfortless. Yes. And allow us to face through life battles or trials and tribulations. He's there to walk along with us. Amen. 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 To comfort us. Yes. To guide us. Yes. He's our intercessor. Yes. He's our advocate. Yes. The one that stands by us Amen. to give us ideas. Yes. Amen. Yes. In winning in life. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's open our Bibles again quickly. So 2 Corinthians Amen. First Corinthians chapter two, sorry. First Corinthians chapter two. from verses verses 9 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 9 but as it is written I have not seen nor hear, heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him Amen. But God has revealed them to us through what? His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yes, the deep things of God. Amen. Can we see that the Holy Spirit, He searches the deep things of God? Amen. He helps us to know God. More than any other person would explain to us. You know, where a lot of us say, Lord, I really want to know you more. Lord, I really want more of you. Lord, help me to recognize you. Lord, reveal to me what I have to do. What's your plan? What's your purpose for my life? Amen? The Bible says the Spirit of God, He shows us the deep things of God. What's the will of God for my life? What's the will of God for my children? What's the will of God for me now that I'm here? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So he says the Spirit of God, he reveals the deep things of God unto us. Amen? And he says, for what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. He now says, now we have not received now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good, healing those that were sick or possessed of the devil. Amen? Amen. So Jesus Christ could not even finish his work here on earth without the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit is who anoints us to do that which we do now. For example, me standing here, I couldn't do it in my strength. I couldn't do it in my wisdom. Amen? Do you know that I'm not very good when I stand in front of people without actually preaching the word? When I actually start standing in front of people and start to talk, I start kind of like, I'm not comfortable, you know? But when it comes to preaching the word of God, the confidence just comes. That can be done by a, by a strength. The Bible says in Zechariah 4, 6, it says it's not by might, not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Look, in the Old Testament, the people that were filled with the Holy Spirit were kings, priests, um, prophets, 
and judges. God would give them an assignment. But they couldn't do that assignment without being filled with the Holy Spirit first. We just read from Exodus now that these guys, they were actually the ones in charge of building the tabernacle. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says God had to fill them with the Spirit of God in all manner of workmanship, in cutting of stones, in order to build properly. Amen? Amen. Solomon, a king, he couldn't rule Israel without the Spirit of God. Solomon, I mean Saul, when the Spirit of God left him, he lost everything. Amen? Amen? So we want to be acquainted with the Holy Spirit in everything we do. You know how we how we actually get the Holy Spirit involved in what we do? We always have to first of all recognize that He's there. Amen? Amen? You have to recognize and you deliberately say, Holy Spirit, in myself, I can't do this, but I need your help here. Amen. This morning, when I was getting dressed, I didn't know where I dropped my belt. I dropped it somewhere. So I was looking everywhere in the house. And the Holy Spirit said to me, well, you're going to preach about the Holy Spirit this morning. Go on, put it to test now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I said, and I, 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 I talked about it for a second. I said, Lord, Spirit of the living God, you need to help me with my belt. I'm looking for it everywhere. Because I, I remember bringing it downstairs. But I just didn't know exactly where I put it. I went to check in the kitchen, in the living room. Why was it in the living room somewhere? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just, a minute I said it, I just kept on looking. And it was just right close to my wife's back. So the handle of her bag just looks like a belt. So I was kind of missing that. Amen. Amen. But it had to, you had to do something. Yes. Then he shows you. Amen. Amen. He's always there. Amen. He lives in us. He's not. Look, you know all. You know. Look. Let me tell you something. You guys, that was. You say. You know when you have those bullies in school mm. that bullies you. Mm. Huh? You know you have a comforter that is with you mm -hmm. to protect you, yes. to guide you. Amen. Amen. To lead you in the right path that you should go. Amen. So you don't even come across those guys. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is there all every time. Amen. Amen. You know when you have conflicts at work yes. and you don't know how to deal with it? Amen. Run to the toilet and say, Holy Spirit, right now, I just feel like killing somebody right now. But, <laughs> Holy Spirit, I need you. Amen. Amen. The Bible says you through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh. Amen. Amen. You say, Holy Spirit, right now, you know what? Because your head is going, the flesh is alarm bells going everywhere. I just want to blow, I just want to punch somebody in the face. That's your flesh. You can't change it. That's what your flesh is. Amen? But you need the help of the Spirit of God to live for God. Amen? Because He guides you. He strengthens you. In the Old Testament, you know something? How many of us have heard about this? You know, something in the Scriptures? You know? You think something would actually destroy those you know there's a film in Hollywood now about something destroying lots of soldiers amen I'm not saying that you can't start destroying people no something used it for himself instead of using it for the purpose of God amen hallelujah but God actually filled him with the spirit of might that he might protect the children of Israel from the enemy amen but he eventually used it for himself instead of for the purposes of God. You know those times you say, oh, I don't have the strength. I can't do this. Why did you have the strength? For the spirit of might. Amen? To get up in the morning, sometimes for some of us, it's, it's a hard thing. Oh, I'm tired. I receive the spirit of might. Amen. In the name of Jesus. No, you need to, you need to deliberately Use the word of God yes. for your life. Amen. James says, he says, it's not the hearers of the word only, but the doers of the word. Yes. We have to find a way of applying the word of God to our situations. Amen. I'm just giving you an example of how I use the word of God. Amen? Amen. You know, there was a time when Elijah, Elijah or Elijah, it was Elisha, sorry, he died. Yes, but he was in the he 
was in the grave actually. <coughs> and his bones were in there, in the grave. Somebody was dead. And his body touched Elijah's bone. Elisha's bone. And he came alive. Amen. Amen. The anointing of God is so contagious. Amen. Amen. We need to seek God for his presence. The Holy Spirit brings the presence of God to an atmosphere. Amen. It brings the, the, the presence of God to an atmosphere. In that people just get blessed. Because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is the presence of God. It's the glory of God. Amen. And the Bible says, in the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and I. He that also raised Christ from the dead shall quicken our mortal bodies by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So you are great inside of you that the world can throw at you. Amen? Amen? Because of the Spirit of God. One of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is sanctification. Amen? Amen. Sanctification is the same word as holiness. Yes. God said to the children of Israel, says, I have called these people and I have sanctified them. Amen. That means that I have separated them. Amen? Amen. So, God was calling the children of Israel a holy nation. Amen? Amen. Amen. But you know, to walk in holiness, yes. we need the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen? Amen? And one of the ways the Holy Spirit works in our lives is through the Word of God. Amen. First Thessalonians 2 13. First Thessalonians 2 13. I want to show you something. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 13. Are we all there? Amen. Amen. Don't worry, I won't take up too much of your time. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to leave here today. Amen. And begin to commune with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Speak to Him. Amen. Talk to him like somebody is a person, he's always around you. Amen? Amen. Say, Holy Spirit, help me now. Hallelujah. So he says, For this cause also, take we God without season, because when ye when ye receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth. The word of God, which effectually worketh in you that believe it. Amen. Amen. It says the word of God effectually worketh in us that believes it. Amen. The word effectual there is the same word as energy. Energy. Amen. It means is the miracle working power of God's word working in us when we believe it. Amen. The only person that can orchestrate that or the one that can make that happen is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I was talking about sanctification. Amen. Amen. But I think I might have. Um, typed in the wrong scripture. It's 2 Corinthians and Thessalonians 2 13. But maybe the Holy Spirit wants us to know about that. Amen? Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians 2 13 says, I'm talking about sanctification. Sorry about that. Amen? Hallelujah. It says, For we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, for you. Brethren beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through what? Sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Amen? So those, the sanctification process can only happen through belief of the truth. And it is done by the Spirit. Because it says here, it says, God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. Amen? Amen? So the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us. You know, Jesus Christ says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Amen? Amen. And you know, all those things that are not of God, God has to take them off. Amen? Amen. So you can be thoroughly furnished. Amen? Amen? Amen. 
and fit for the master's use. Amen. Amen? Amen. The one that does that work of taking all those, chipping those things up. Look at Michelangelo. Um, John, um, um, Apostle John talked about it. He looked at a stone or rock and he made it into an angel. Amen? So, the Holy Spirit sees us as God's masterpiece. Amen? So, though you see yourself as work in progress, amen, the Holy Spirit sees the finished work and now he begins to make you to now see that, that God sees in his mind for you to come to the revelation of it. Amen? So, it is the work of the Holy Spirit through God's word that he does that. So, you can't be intimidated by those in the world because, hey, you're God's masterpiece. The Bible says you're created in His image and in His likeness. Amen? I'm pretty sure God is not corrupt. It's, it's incorruptible. Amen? And corruption, it means sickness, diseases, poverty, depression, and everything that you can think about in this world. It says, but God has created you to be his masterpiece. Amen. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So you refuse to go through what the world is going through. Yes. So the Holy Spirit helps you to have the mind of Christ. Amen. So you can walk in the truth yes. and in the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit helps us during prayer. Amen. Amen. During our time of prayer, the Holy Spirit is our helper. Amen. All that we know is what our mind can fathom. All that we know is what we can see or we can understand with our minds. But do we all understand everything in the spirit? No. Amen? Amen. We don't understand everything in the spirit. Therefore, we need the Holy Spirit during our time of prayer. Amen? Amen. Romans 8, 26 says, For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to pray. But the spirit helps our infirmities. Amen? Amen? So the Holy Spirit is there to help us in our weakness. Yes. During our time of prayer. Amen? Amen. More, there are times in our lives that our brothers and our sisters, somewhere in the world, are growing, going through challenges. Yes. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit wakes you up at night and says, start to pray. Yes. Amen? And you're thinking, why is the Holy Spirit waking me up now? Why do I need to pray? Or sometimes you just feel a need to pray. A burden to pray. Yes. Amen? Amen. Then you get up. Intercessors. Amen. Take notes. Amen. Hallelujah. We all intercessors. Amen. Hallelujah. You know? And you just have this burden to pray to God. And as you begin to pray, then the Lord might probably bring the person's image into your yes. mind. Yes. Or you just thought about that person and you just prayed for them. And the next day, you wake up in the morning and straight away your bell, your, your phone rang mm -hmm. or rings. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And you think, that, oh, did you hear about this? Oh. He had an accident last night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God, but you know, he almost died. Yeah. But God helped him. Wow. And Guess what time you had an accident? At the same time you got up and you were praying. Amen. Amen. So do we need the Holy Spirit when we pray? Yes, yes we do. You do. We all do. Especially leaders, pastors. Well, I don't even know what everybody goes through. Because some, not everything people tell you. But there are times when you pray and the Lord reveals them to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you just have to keep praying for them. Mm -hmm. And keep praying for them. Yes. Look, I tell you what, for you to live 
a perfect life in Christ, a successful life in Christ, you need to be acquainted with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to ask Him to help you yes. in your prayer time, yes. in your meditation time yes. on the Scriptures, because through the Word, it will give you a direction that you have to go through. Yes. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's open quickly the last scripture. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1. Amen? Proverbs chapter four. Hear my hear my children the instruction of a father. And give attention to no understanding. Amen. We talked about the spirit of understanding earlier on. Amen. Yeah. This is, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and leave. Amen? Amen? Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the word of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Amen? Amen. So you want to live a preserved life? You want to walk in wisdom? You want to see ahead of time? Amen? Amen. Before you walk into danger? And God suddenly prompts you and gives you a word mm -hmm. and you ignore it. Mm -hmm. You forsaken wisdom or instruction. Mm -hmm. Then you go into it and say, Oh, I shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. How many times will the man of God warn you two, three times? Mm -hmm. That girl, be careful. That boy, be careful. Mm -hmm. Because they see something that you don't see. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Because sometimes. Changes now, amen. They think like, you know what? My dad is old school, man. <laughs> oh, my mom is old school, man. They don't know because this is a new time, you know. They don't even know what that is. They don't even know what that is, amen. But you can see ahead. That's right. And you say, hey, boy, where you're heading to? It's dangerous. Because you don't even understand how to hear the Holy Spirit. Yes, Your parents, they spend time praying. They hear the Holy Spirit. Yes. They can see ahead of time. Mm -hmm. They say, hey boy, don't. Mm -hmm. Then you go ahead and you do They say, hey. Mm -hmm. Then you come back running to your parents. Amen. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they, they still love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They will hug you and yes. help you again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit helps us in our walk. Yes. Teenagers or young ones here and everybody, let us desire the presence of the Holy Spirit. It will help us in a lot of things. Sometimes we're trying to put our money into businesses and we'll put it in the wrong thing. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you, even in your businesses. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I will finish on this last one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 36, 26. I'm going to just read it and just let, let you guys. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ezekiel 36, 26. It says here. I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And cause you to walk in my status. Mm -hmm. And I will, and you will keep my judgment and do them. Mm -hmm. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. Mm -hmm. You shall be my people. And I will be your God. I will deliver you from your uncleanness. I will call for the grains and multiply it. And bring no famine upon you. Amen. The Holy Spirit helps you. He helps you even to deal with famine. It helps you to deal with wants. 
He instructs you to invest in the right investment. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because that's part of his work. Yes. Amen. Yes. So poverty is not your portion when you have the Holy Spirit Amen. to help you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So are we going to develop a close relationship with the Holy Spirit? Amen. Yes. Are we going to do that in the week? Are we going to make it a way of life? That we have to be acquainted with him because he created you. Amen. The Bible even called the Holy Spirit. It's called Jesus Christ, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we need the Spirit of God all the time. Amen. So we're going to practice what we've talked about today. Amen. We're going to go through the Word, study about the Holy Spirit, find out who he is. And if you want to know much about the Holy Spirit, we're going to be treating the Holy Spirit in Bible studies. Amen? Amen. So, please make sure you have the Bible studies. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. Amen? <coughs> Let's rise up on our feet. Let's just thank the Lord this morning. Amen? Let's just give Him all the glory. I want you to say after me, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For giving me the Holy Spirit. For giving me the Holy Spirit. To help me. To help me. In all areas of my life. In my family, in making decisions, making wise decisions, helping me in my prayer life, helping me in the word of God, that I might work in your purpose and plan for my life. As I look at the word, the Holy Spirit reveals the glory of God and I am changed into that image, even by the Spirit of God. Not that I'm sufficient of myself to do anything of myself, but my sufficiency is of you, Lord, who has made me an able minister of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. The Spirit gives life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching me on how to raise my children, on how to go with the affairs of life, and to keep me humble, forever serving our Lord Jesus Christ. Until He comes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. May be seated. Hallelujah. We thank you. Yes, we need the Holy Spirit day in and day out. Amen. Amen. The song says, Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here in your presence. Yeah? The Holy Spirit is important in our lives. Glory to God. Stephen Tony, can you come, please?